Amos, it's Sunday again. Uh, Sunday is right, and don't forget we's on the radio every Sunday for Rinso. And look who's here, Ken Carpenter. And he's got the biggest news in Rinso's history. Listen to him. It's the biggest news ever. It's new 1950 Rinso with Solium, a full year ahead of time. New 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. But more about that in a few minutes. Now, Lever Brothers Company and new 1950 Rinso bring you the Amos and Andy Show. <laughs> Yes, sir. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Rinso, brings you a full half hour of entertainment with Lou Lubin, Eddie Green, Ernestine Way, the Jubilaires, Jeff Alexander's orchestra and chorus, and radio's all-time favorites, Amos and Andy. <laughs> well, last night, the Kingfish and his wife, Sapphire, attended a big buffet supper at the home of their wealthy friends. The kingfish, as usual, overate and was up all night with a bad stomach. It's now the following day, and Sapphire is just entering the bedroom to see how he is. Oh, I tell you, Sapphire, I was a sick man from that meal last night. I think I got Potoman poisoning. <laughs> well, George, what do you think made you sick? Well, that lobster. That's the last time I'll ever eat lobster cuspidor. <laughs> George, that ain't lobster cuspidor. It's lobster humidor. <laughs> Uh, maybe you're right. I thought I tasted a cigar in there someplace. George, what you talking about? They always serve the most wonderful food, and that food was excellent. Excellent, huh? Then why did the hostess have a punch bowl filled with bicarbonate of soda? <laughs> I tell you, that was the most popular dish on the table. George, while we're on the subject of that dinner, I don't mind telling you that you disgraced yourself last night at that party. Oh, what you talking about? Well, George, at a buffet, you're supposed to wait your turn in line. You don't pull your chair up to the buffet table and eat right out of the bowl. <laughs> well, I've done it in self-defense. Why couldn't you act it like the rest of the people? Oh, what you talking about? They was just vultures. They was eating everything in sight. I rested my hand on the table for a minute, and before I could get away, some fella poured ketchup on it. That's right. <laughs> argument with you if you ain't feeling well. Hey, by the way, honey, uh, any of my friends called up to see how I'm feeling this morning? Of course not, George. What friends has you got? Hey, wait a minute, George. That's a pretty big statement, you know. <laughs> I got hundreds of friends. That's who I got, hundreds of them. Don't fool yourself, George. The truth of the matter is, I don't think you got one true friend, and that's a pretty sad state of affairs. Well, what about Andy? You ought to be ashamed the way you treated him. And, George, one of these days, your conscience is going to start to bother you for the way you've acted towards everybody. <laughs> If I was you, George, I'd start right now trying to make a friend or two. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, have it your own way, George. What you want for breakfast? Breakfast? Well, I think I'll have some coffee and some toast. And oh, yeah, a lobster. A lobster? <laughs> yeah, I stuck one in my coat pocket last night just for I could lobster. George! <laughs> oh, me. What is she talking about? No friends. Maybe she's right, though. Yeah, I guess from now on, I ought to start being nice to Andy. Make up to him for a lot of the things I done done to him. Yeah, then I'll be his friend. Let's see, how do a friend act? He's kind, he's polite, courteous and honest in his dealings. Hmm, I'm getting into a whole new field here. <laughs> uh, come in, brother Henry, a friend of my childhood who I crazy about. How is you? Kingfish, what is you talking about? Oh, nothing, Andy. Just reminding you how much I love you and how much you love me. Here, let me put my arm around you, boy. Now, hold it, hold it, Kingfish. Now, just a minute. The last time you done that, when I went out of here, my gold watch was missing. <laughs> oh, that was an accident, Andy. I remember your watch caught on one of the buttons of my vest, and I didn't discover it till I got to the pawn shop. <laughs> well, keep away from me, Kingfish. Well, now, look, Andy. I don't blame you for being a little suspicious. I guess I, well, I guess I sort of took advantage of you a little in the past. A little? Since January, you done sold me two gold bricks, the Brooklyn Navy Yard and Central Park Lake, including the ducks. Yeah, I guess I did have a pretty big year. <laughs> but, Andy, that's all over with now, son. I was a changed man, and, well, I'm turning over a new leaf. What you mean by that? Andy, I'll prove it to you. I'm going to start paying you back what I owe you. Huh? I'm going to do a lot of rest restituting, and I'm going to start off by tooting you this $5 bill. Yeah, you're <laughs> You ain't been out in the sun too long or nothing, did you? No, no, Andy. It's all yours. Take the $5 there. Yeah, well, thanks, Kingfish. 
I'll just put this five dollars in my wallet, Chill. Yeah, put in uh, naturally, Andy. You was my best friend, and I want to see. Uh, I want to see. Uh, uh, say, Andy, when you opened that wallet to put the money in, I noticed a flash of green in there. <laughs> uh, you ain't saving four leaf clovers, nothing like that, in the pocket. <laughs> Kingfish, that's $200 I done brought out the bank. I've been figuring on buying some life insurance with it. Hmm, got $200 in there in your pocketbook, huh? Hey, Kingfish, what's the matter with you? Your eyes just lit up like the taillights of a Cadillac. <laughs> uh, take a chair, brother, and then put your wallet up to the table here. I want to talk to you. <laughs> and, uh, so you're figuring on taking out life insurance, huh? I guess you're tired of living, huh? Why, what you mean by that? Well, and uh, most people don't realize it, but life insurance is a tricky thing. It makes dying look so attractive, you see. Well, how you figure? Well, Andy, let's say that you take out a life insurance policy that pays $5,000 when you pass it on. Yeah. You ain't going to be able to resist the temptation. The temptation? Certainly. You know that all you got to do to become a wealthy man is to kick the bucket. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I wonder why they don't mention that in that booklet they give you. To read. <laughs> oh, I tell you the truth, Dan. Uh, why, in the last 20 years, life insurance has made rigor mortis more popular than gin rummy. I, I... <laughs> Well, I never looked at it quite that way. I was thinking about taking out one of them 10-year policies. Well, now, there's another disadvantage. Say you take the 10-year policy. Yeah. You got to pay to come to premiums for 10 years, don't you? Yeah, I guess I do. Well, suppose you die in three years. Andy, you'd be paying premiums seven years after you was under the ground, you see? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't, that don't sound too good, no. Oh, I, I'd give up the thought of insurance, Andy. You couldn't pass the medical exam, no way. I couldn't? No, Andy, it's just like automobile insurance. If the brakes and the tires and the motor's bad... They won't give you no policy. And right now, you look like a 1912 Essex. That's what you are. No, sir. No, sir. Now, Brother Andy, instead of throwing your money away on life insurance, uh, my advice to you is to turn the $200 over to me for investments in the Stevens Holding Company. I'm going to tell you, I got something. Oh, so that's your angle, huh? I ought to know there was something like that. Look, Kingfish, I'm getting out of here. You has gypped me for the last time. I ain't going to speak to you no more, never. Goodbye. But wait a minute, Andy. Hmm. There's a appreciation for you. After I try to make friends with the boy, give him five dollars out of the kindness and goodness of my heart. Then he turned on me. Hmm. Lucky that five dollars I give him was counterfeit. <laughs> well, so Andy and my friend, what's the difference? I don't need no friends. Oh, yes, you do, George. Who's that? Who said that? Well, it's me, George. Your conscience. My conscience? What are you bothering me about, here? Wait a minute now. George, when Andy walked out that door, you lost your last friend. Well, so what? Uh, I don't need no friends. George, there's a famous old saying. When you pass on and no one mourns for you, you will never rest in peace. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, but there must be some of the boys that will mourn for me when I'm gone. I don't think so, George. Uh, holy smokes, I got to find out. Yeah, I got to make sure that I got somebody to mourn for me. I tell you, if my funeral was a flop, I'd be brokenhearted for the rest of my life. I, I... Oh, John Henry, the powerful man. He was stronger than a tiger. But as gentle as a man. John! Henry was a powerful man When John Henry was a little baby Just a sitting on his papa's knee Well, he laid his hands on a little piece of steel And said, it's gonna be the death of me La, la, gonna be the death of me Of me Well, John Henry was a mighty man John Henry Henry was a mighty man John Henry Every time his hammer rung It made a sound like Kingdom Come John Henry was a steel-driving man The captain told John Henry John, go bring me a steam drill around Give me a nine-pound hammer with a four-foot handle And I'll beat your steam drill down Lord, Lord, I'll beat your steam drill down Listen to John Henry's hammer <laughs> Ringing upon the mountainside Every time it takes a stroke, listen to that mighty hammer drive. <laughs> John Henry, I believe that this mountain's breaking in. But John Henry replied to the captain, oh my. It ain't nothing but my hammer sucking wind. Lord, Lord, it ain't nothing but my hammer sucking wind. They 
took John Henry on the mountain, and the mountain was so hard. He drove so hard, he broke his heart. And he laid down his hammer, and he died. Lord, Lord, laid down his hammer, and he died. Now every rounder in the sparrow land says, old John Henry was a New 1950 Rinso is here, a year ahead, the greatest development in soap history. 1950 Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. New Rinso with wonderful Solium gets white clothes whiter than new and washable colors brighter than new. Yes, 1950 Rinso gets white clothes whiter than new and washable colors brighter than new. My pretty summer cottons are gayer and brighter than when I first bought them. Yes, only new Rinso contains Solium, the scientific sunlight ingredient. 1950 Rinso has three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. And yet Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to your hands. Get Rinso and see how Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. And now back to Amos and Andy. Oh, me. That conscience got me worried. Saying that I won't have no friends to mourn for me. I didn't sleep all night thinking about it. I think I'll go in Shorty's barber shop here and tell him my trouble. Hello there, Shorty. How is you? Well, I was doggone for that. I'm a majesty. I, 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 I never expected. I told you, I, 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 hi, cake face. Uh, uh, say, Shorty, uh, I didn't know you was busy. I, I see you got somebody in the chair there. Oh, uh, yeah, that's all right, Kingfish. Uh, d- 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 this is my brother, Sam, that just come up from Georgia. Oh, your brother. Yeah, well, I must say you don't look alike. Oh, no, no. no nobody ever thinks that we are brothers. We, we as different as night and day. Oh, uh, Sam, uh, Sam I, I'd like you to meet the Kingfish. Yeah, well, we, 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 well, if we, we, we met on, on the beach, uh, ha, ha, hi, Kingfish. <laughs> Well, uh, glad to know you, Sam. Uh, uh, tell me, is you barbering business, too? Oh, oh no, but, uh, back home, I, I got a big job. I, I, I'm an executive with a... Uh, uh, see, I, I, I got a big job with the de- department store. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm a speech instructor. <laughs> speech instructor, huh? Kind of like Shorty here with your first pupil. <laughs> I tell you, Shorty, uh, the reason I dropped in to talk to you... I worried about my friends not liking me. Oh, you is, yes, hmm? Yeah, say, Sam, now you ain't never met me before. Uh, tell me, in our short association here, what did you think of me? Uh, well, uh, well uh, I can't answer that. Yeah, well, Lord, you ain't forming an opinion yet, huh? Uh, that's the trouble I have. <laughs> now, well, uh, I, I tell you, Shorty, uh, this worrying about whether my friends like me or not has got me down. Mm. It's, getting me, it's getting me so bad that, well, I, I didn't get a week a wink of sleep last night. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, well, the thing I want to know is, how, how can I get some sleep at night? Well, I, I, I used to have the same trouble, Kingfish. But me and Sam here, we, we worked out a wonderful method for curing insomnia. You remember, Sam? Oh, 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 oh sure, sure. I, I, I remember, at first it took a long walk. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's right, that's right. Then, then I took a hot bath and put on some loose pajamas. <laughs> And after that, you did, it, 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 it drunk a glass of uh, warm milk, and, and, and you put a pillow on, on each leg. Yeah, yeah you, that's right, Sam. Then, then I started counting sheep, and when I counted up to 10,000 sheep, you, I, I, you, I, then I stopped. Uh, then you fell asleep, huh? No, by then it was time to get up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll say one thing, Shorty. You ain't much help to me, huh? Hey, hey, look, look, look Shorty. I, I, I'm in a hurry. Will, will, will you please finish my hair? Cause... Well, like I was saying, Sam, I, I, I think it ought to be cut short because you... Uh, but when no, I... no, 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 Shorty. I, I, I want it to be long. And I can't, uh, now, listen, it's got to be... Uh, no, 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 This thing about not having no friends to mourn for me when I was gone is getting me down. 
This is the second night in the road, and I ain't been able to sleep. Oh, me. I hope that sedative, that sapphire give me, unlaxes me. Oh, oh, oh. I'm feeling a little sleepy now. If I passed on, I wonder just how the boys would act when they come back from the funeral and get together to Lodge Hall. Oh, oh, oh. I wonder what they'd say. Well, Fred Gwendale, a newspaper man. Come in, Fred. Well, hello, Dan. How is you, boy? How is you? Greetings and felicitations yeah. to you. Oh, that's great, Fred. How'd you like the Kingfisher's funeral? Oh, today? Ha, ha, ha. Uh, wonderful, Andy, wonderful. He had so much fun since New Year's Eve. Really had a frolic there, boy. <laughs> You know, kicking the bucket was the best thing that kingfish ever done. Oh, you said it, Andy, boy, you said it. Yeah, yeah. Say, uh, didn't the old goat look natural laying there, though? Yeah. (laughs) And you know, it's certainly a pleasure being in the same room with that guy and not having to worry about your wallet. (laughs) It was a short funeral service, though, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. When the preacher got up and tried to say something nice about the kingfish, he was really stumped all right, yeah. (laughs) That's the first time I ever seen a preacher live a eulogy with his fingers crossed. Well, you know, Andy, by leaving early, you done missed the funniest part of the whole thing. Yeah, what was that? Well, you see, they had a little trouble there. They was looking for six people who really loved the kingfish to act as pallbearers. Yeah, how'd they make out? Uh, not so good. The undertaker had to carry the box down to I'll piggyback. That's what I <laughs> uh, Say, Andy, you didn't even go out to the cemetery, did you? Oh, no, I was too tired. How was the service out there, Fred? Well, uh, Brother Jackson, uh, give a little talk there. It wasn't bad. The only trouble is I'd heard all the jokes before, so I... Uh, <laughs> Say, it's getting late, Andy. I gotta be running along here. Oh, yeah, gotta go, huh? Yeah, I'd love to stay and talk about the Kingfish's demise, but you know how it is. Business before pleasure, yeah. boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was certainly nice for a customer thing, would you? Oh, yeah, yeah. When something nice like this happens, it's always a pleasure to discuss it. Would you? So long, Andy, old oh, so boy. Long. So long. I'll see you later, old boy. Bye-bye. Oh, what a dream. That was awful. Andy and Gwendell just couldn't feel that way about me. It just couldn't be true, oh, me. That dream done tired me out more than anything. Well, I know one thing. My wife, Sapphire, wouldn't act that way. Yeah, and I don't think my friend Stonewall, the lawyer, would neither. Yes, if I passed on those two, we'd really be broken up about it. How come Sapphire? (laughs) Guess she's coming back from the Kingfisher's funeral. Happy days are here again. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, that sapphire girl. I meant to compliment you on that dress you wore at the funeral. That was a lovely shade of red. <laughs> yes, indeed. I thought you know. Yeah, and I thought it gave me a fair little bounce. That's the reason I picked it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know it. I noticed you left the festivities early. Well, I didn't want to stone all, but I just had to. <laughs> you see, I didn't want to be late for my rumble lesson. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, look, I want to express my sympathy for the whole thing, Sapphire. Well, thank you, Stonewall. Uh, you know, now that George is gone, I wonder how he likes it way up there in the wide blue yonder. Uh, well, if I'm in a judge of character, I think he's in the downtown branch. <laughs> Yeah, well, I hope you don't grieve too much about this whole thing, Sam. I try not to be lonely. Oh, I can't be lonely. Uh, I've got a date tonight with the man who drove the funeral car. Oh, beautiful! Oh, me, what a dream. My wife, too, and Stonewall. My friends just couldn't act that way. That dream was just a fig leaf of my imagination. (laughs) My friends couldn't act that way. They loves me. Oh, no, they don't, George. Oh, conscience, it's you again. Yes, George, and your dream was true. None of your friends would miss you. But, conscience, it's it's all a mistake. My friends do love me, and I'm going to find some way to prove it to you. Well, you better, George. Remember, like I told you before, every man must have friends to mourn him if he wants to rest in peace. Good night, George. Hmm. I'll show that conscience. I gotta do something desperate. I'll get my dear trusting friends to love me if I have to double cross every one of them to get them to do it. That's what I do. (laughs) 
Ladies, here is something new, yes, something wonderful, an improvement that you'll say is the greatest ever in your kitchen. It's a big, gleaming, two-quart, self-draining aluminum saucepan with a Bakelite handle. Yes, it's self-draining, and that means that you can pour away hot water from vegetables without lifting the cover, with no danger whatever of scalding your hands. This wonderful aluminum regal ware saucepan is yours for half price if you act quickly. All you do is send one dollar and two Rinso box tops to Lever Homemakers Club, Box 27, New York 8. That's Box 27, New York 8. This offer is good only in the United States, Hawaii, and Alaska, and for a limited time. So hurry, hurry. Send one dollar and two Rinso box tops for your self-draining aluminum saucepan right away. The address, Lever Homemakers Club, Box 27, New York 8, New York. And now, back to Amos and Andy. Well, I hope this simple the angle works. I'll pretend that I'm going to commit suicide and then disappear for a few days. That ought to win my friends over. Oh, here comes Andy. I'll try the suicide stuff on him first. Uh, come in, Brother Andy. Oh, you was in here, huh? I ain't speaking to you, Kingfish. Well, Andy, you won't have to worry about me much longer, old pal. What you mean by that? Well, you remember what Shakespeare said, to be or not to be. Yeah. Well, I done decided not to be. <laughs> Kingfish, what is you talking about? Andy, I found out my friends don't love me. So I was going to beat the Grim Reaper by reaping myself. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, Kingfish, you don't expect me to believe you're going to do away with yourself, do you? Well, Andy, it just so happens that I just finished writing my suicide note. Got it right here. Suicide note. That's right. I was just getting ready to take it down to get it notarized to make it official. That's what I... Can... <laughs> well, I'll read it to you, Andy. Yeah. Yeah. You better get out your handkerchief, because it's going to do a lot of blubbering around here. <laughs> yeah. I do this, Andy, because my friends is driving me to it. Yeah, well, go ahead. Read the note there. Read the thing. Okay. It starts out here. It says, Dear Friends and Murderers, I, George Stevens, being a sound mind and about to slaughter myself, uh, hereby says farewell. Please omit flowers, as I as always suffered from hay fever, and I ain't fooling either. Uh, don't just kind of tear your heart out in? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, then I close up by saying, address all replies of this note in care of the county morgue, box 13, signed your decreased brother, George Stevens. That's what I got. Listen, Kingfish, I don't believe none of this. You ain't gonna do away with yourself. Oh, no? Well, I'd have done it a long time ago if I could make up my mind which way to do it. Yeah. I uh, jumped off the George Washington Bridge, only the high altitude gives me nosebleeds. <laughs> then I was thinking of sticking the exhaust pipe of automobile in my mouth, but used car prices still too high. <laughs> then the last thing I hit on was uh, using a noose. Listen, Kingfish, I still don't believe none of this. I know you ain't gonna jump off of no bridge or nothing like that. All right, Andy, but just do me one favor. If you was ever fishing in the East River and you feel a heavy tug on the line, haul it in gently. You might have me by the seat of my pants, you know that? I ain't gonna listen to this, Kingfish. I has going. Huh. I'll show Andy I ain't kidding. I know exactly what I'll do. I'll leave for New Jersey tonight for three, four days and hide out till the boys come to their senses about me. Amos, I tell you, when the Kingfish showed me that suicide note three days ago, I thought it was just another one of his tricks. Oh, no, and I uh, think this thing is getting serious, you know it. I ain't seen the Kingfish around for three, four days, and ain't nobody heard from him. Oh, he disappeared all right. I wonder if he took the Lodge Treasury along with him as a traveling companion. <laughs> no, no, no way that he can get the money out of the Lodge Treasury. You know, we bought him a new safe for the Lodge, but he's the only one that don't know the combination, you know. <laughs> Well, you see, that suicide note... Yeah, well, what did that suicide note say that he read, Andy? Well, he said he's going to do away with himself. Jonah? Yeah, he said he was figuring on jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge into a exhaust pipe or something. Like that. Uh, into an exhaust pipe? Yeah, and with that pointed head of his, he might make it, too. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that's, that's the way he's going to end it all, huh? Well, he had some other ideas, something about... Let's see, he was going to take a noose and hang himself by the seat of his pants. Yeah, well, look, now, even though the kingfish has got his false and we ought to do something to find him before he gets a chance to do something desperate. Yeah, but how are we going to get hold of him? Well, we'll offer a reward for information that will help us find the kingfish. Mm -hmm. I know what we'll do, Andy. I'll put up $5, you put up $5, and we'll get some of the other members to chip in. Yeah. Then we'll take $200 out of the large treasury 
And we'll put an ad in the newspaper offering the reward for the Kingfisher's return. Yeah, and then when we find him, we'll give him a big party and welcome him back like the profitable son. Yeah. Well, let me shake your hand again, Kingfish. I sure is glad we found you. Yeah, well, it's great to be back, too, Andy. And I tell you, it really made me feel good that you and all my friends love me so much that you put up that reward to have me found. Oh, yeah, we really missed you, all right. We were so glad when that private detective, Mr. Blake, wired us that he found you in New Jersey. Oh, yeah, Mr. Blake, C.J. had a newspaper, and he snooped me out of the hotel where I was staying at. Uh. Yeah, I was waiting around for the high tide so I could jump in the river, you see. No fooling, is that right? Oh, yeah, matter of fact, when he knocked on the door, I was just putting on my bathing suit. <laughs> I was going in that water hot or cold. I was going in there. <laughs> Well, we sent Mr. Blake the $300 we raised, and we was all happy to do it. Oh, yeah, well, uh, certainly it's touching for me to know that I got so many friends in the world, Ando. Yeah. It was a big weight off my conscience, I tell you that. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're back. I'm getting on home, Kingfish. I'll see you later. So long, Ando, my dear old pal. Give my love to dear brothers. <coughs> oh, me, what a relief off my mind. I really found out how much my friends miss me after all. Well, George, I guess you're very happy now. Oh, oh, oh it's you, conscience. Yes, George. And from the response of your friends when you disappeared, I guess it's very obvious that you have a lot of fine qualities after all. Oh, yeah. I, I guess I does, all right. And now that all your friends have shown how much they think of you, I know that you're not going to cheat them anymore. Oh, no, Conscience. I ain't never going to cheat them. You sure now? Oh, certainly I sure. I don't have to cheat them. Uh, you see, that $300 I got by posing as Detective Blake gonna hold me over. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't mean that, Conscience. Oh, wait a minute. Andy, you know how our announcer, Ken Carpenter, says how more women use rinse soap than any other soap in the world? Uh-huh. Well, listen, he's going to say it again. Can't stop him, huh? Well, who wants to stop him? Andy, this is the most important thing that you can tell a woman. It's new 1950 rinse soap. Yes, it's 1950 rinse soap a year ahead, the only soap that contains solium. New rinse with solium actually gets white clothes whiter than new and washable colors brighter than new. Yes, it's the greatest development in soap history. New 1950 Rinso with three times the whiter washing action of any other soap. Get safe, soapy rich 1950 Rinso right away. Good night, folks. See you next Sunday. Be sure and be with us next Sunday at the same time when Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of New Rinso with Solium, will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Life Boy gets skin cleaner. Life Boy, with its purifying ingredients, gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Yes, doctors proved it. You are cleaner, safer from B.O. when you bathe daily with Life Boy. Get Life Boy health soap right away. Be sure and listen to the Amos and Andy show at the same time next Sunday. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.